We're asked to determine the inverse Laplace transform shown here. Well, we could perform partial fraction decomposition. For this example, let's use the inverse form of the convolution theorem. Looking at our notes below, the inverse Laplace transform of big F of S times big G of S equals the convolution of F and G. So notice how we can think of this fraction as a product of two fractions, where big F of S would be equal to one divided by the quantity S minus two, and big G of S is equal to one divided by the quantity S plus three. For our next step, we'll find F of X and G of X. And then to determine this inverse Laplace transform, we'll determine the convolution of F and G. So the inverse Laplace transform of big F of S is equal to F of X. And looking at our table below, big F of S is in the form of one divided by the quantity S minus A, where A is equal to two, which means F of X is F of X equals E raised to the power of two X. Now looking at big G of S, you might want to rewrite this as one divided by the quantity S minus negative three, so it better fits the form from the table. The inverse Laplace transform of big G of S equals G of X, which again looking at the table, would be this formula here where A equals negative three, so G of X equals E raised to the power of negative three X. So now we can determine this inverse Laplace transform by determining the convolution of F and G. So again, the given inverse Laplace transform is equal to the convolution of F and G which is equal to the integral from zero to x of f of the quantity x minus tau, which should be e raised to the power of two times the quantity x minus tau, times g of tau, which should be e raised to the power of negative three tau d tau. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. Let's first distribute here, and then because we're multiplying and the bases are the same, we can add the exponents. So we have the integral from zero to x of e raised to the power of two x minus two tau minus three tau, which would be two x minus five tau. And now from here we'll perform u substitution, where u is equal to two x minus five tau, and differential u is equal to the derivative of two x minus five tau with respect to tau, which would be negative five d tau, dividing both sides by negative five, Notice how we have negative one-fifth du equals d tau. So we can think of all of this as negative one-fifth e to the u du, which means the antiderivative is negative one-fifth times e raised to the power of two x minus five tau. And we're integrating from tau equals zero to tau equals x. So let's write this as negative one-fifth times, when tau equals x, we'd have e raised to the power of two x minus five x, which is negative three x, so we have e to the negative three x. And then minus, when tau is zero, we just have e to the positive two x. Which means the inverse Laplace transform is equal to negative one-fifth times the quantity e to the negative three x minus e to the two x. So when determining an inverse Laplace transform, if we recognize the function as a product of Laplace transforms, we can use the inverse form of the convolution theorem to determine the inverse Laplace transform. I hope you found this helpful.